report on this computer and right. share. Okay. Hello and welcome to today's uh, session. Um, Rashu uh, was needed elsewhere, so he's allowed uh, me, Sarah, and uh, Monica to uh, sort of lead the discussion today. Um, yeah, it's a small group, but um, we just kind of want to recap uh, what happened in part one. Um, basically, we we went through some definitions that we felt were kind of important, really diving into what diversity, inclusion, and equity actually mean, and um, really looking at why an organization would want to have a charter and statement. Um, uh, so today we'd, uh, we'd like to kind of actually start work on that on that charter and we've got a, a group with that represents a bunch of different organizations. So we've got Sarah from Swedish Curling, myself, um, I can kind of speak to USA Curling's um, charter. We've got Margaret from um, Curling Scotland and Laos from uh, Curling Guitar. So we've got a good group and all of us are kind of working on the process of writing a charter. Um, getting some policy in place and we're all at different stages in that process but we're planning to kind of share what we've done so far and and where we still need to go with this so today um, we're going to get started we're going to have something tangible by the end of this workshop that you can kind of move forward with um, we're all going to discuss what we're working on and we're going to create an outline for our charter and also start filling out some of the the content So we kind of covered this in the first um, session, but again, just to reiterate um, why you would want to create a charter in the first place. And we think that it's really important for an organization to get aligned with a unified DEI vision. And one of the only ways to really do that is to have something down in writing. Um, so we want to start the draft process today in getting that vision written down, but this process should also be collaborative. So you'll wanna take this back to your organization and involve people with different backgrounds and from different areas and have them kind of take a look and provide input. Um, this is kind of a reiterative, reiterative process and it doesn't happen overnight. So um, definitely get other people involved, have them look at your draft and um, provide input throughout the process. So um, some of the things you wanna consider just from the beginning are um, what impact will this have kind of on your organization or within your organization? Is this statement gonna be used internally or externally? Um, who's gonna be using it? Who's gonna be looking at it? Is it just your employees or external stakeholders, business partners, um, curling clubs, et cetera? Uh, you'll need to consider whose input you'll need to make sure that it's actually sending the right, in, the right message. So you'll wanna have somebody in leadership looking at this um, to make sure that it's actually showing what your organization's values are, what you believe in, and, and how, how you wanna move forward in this DEI work, what commitments you want to commit to. Um, and then additionally, you may wanna consider some external resources. Um, so for example, USA Curling, we're kind of underneath the US Olympic Committee umbrella. We're an NGB or a national governing body within the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee. So first step for us is to kind of look above us at the US Olympic Committee and see what statement they have that's external facing to everybody. Um, if they have any resources that can help us kind of write and draft a charter, I'm really looking to that organization as a starting point for our own charter. And additionally, we also may want to consider consulting with curling clubs that are beneath us and, and members of our organization because they may have some really well written policy or um, a charter that could also apply to our vision and our mission. So yeah, that's kind of the purpose that um, we're looking at. And I guess we can kind of get started in the writing piece. Yeah, just curious about those questions. Like Margaret, I know that you already um, you have already come quite far with Scottish curling. Um, would you say like what impact does it have in your organization? Um, and who did you use as experts to to help you to help you create your statement? Uh, well, we we got ex we got expert 
um, help from Sports Scotland. And they're very good because they run courses. So for instance, when I became a board member, they ran a course on equality and diversity. So they run courses for board members and people like that. So you can go and attend that. So that gives you some training. Um, and, and we also within our organization, so that when we do all our coaching courses, we always have equality and diversity training as part of the overall coaching parameter. So it kind of filters down to all the kind of things that we run within the organization. Um, we up until recently appointed um, a member of staff who had specific responsibility for disability curling. Um, unfortunately, she's just left, but we're trying to replace her. Um, it's the funding that's a problem. And she was fairly instrumental in moving um, a whole lot of, um, of uh, really expanding the whole field of people um, with disabilities who want to come into curling. And that was great. So we did a lot of wheelchair curling, but she did a lot of stuff with people who were deaf, hard of hearing, and, and have, they've developed sign language for curling and things like that with the local university. So and we've done, and, and people, with, um, vi, uh, people who are visually impaired. So we've done quite a lot of, of, of stuff around disability curling. I think where we probably are not doing as well is, is the area of possibly ethnic groups. Probably that would be the one. If you ask me where I would be directing my energies next, that's where I would be, be thinking about in terms of diversity. Um, and that's, that's quite complex because Scotland does not have a large ethnic population. Um, we, you tend to find, you know, we do have some, but, but it's actually proportionally looking at that and, and trying to, to get into that, that group. So that's where we're, that's where we're moving to next um, in terms of our, you know, trying to increase our, the diversity of our membership. Yeah, and Margaret, we, we may have some webinars on um, outreach programs. We already had one with the Rocks and Rings program. I, I, kind of I watched that. I did, I watched that. I didn't attend, I wasn't able to attend, but I have watched it with Chad. Yeah, it was really interesting, yeah. yeah. So we're definitely looking to um, provide resources in that area as well. You also remind me that, um, you know, even once an organization has a, a charter or a statement, even if it kind of comes from above, like in your case with um, Sports Scotland, uh, there still may be some um, additional policy that needs to be written uh, with regards to specific groups. Like you're talking about um, disabilities and, and how that and curling and how to um, make that fair and accessible. Um, I know USA Curling is working on a transgender policy and also a stick curling policy right now. So there might be additional policy writing that needs to happen after the initial charter is written. But like, like you said, the charter kind of provides a great starting point and a yeah. unifying point for yeah. the entire organization's yeah. value. Yeah. yeah. So Leos, um, where are you in your organization? What uh, impact do you think um, um, this statement or charter will have uh, for you? So we also under the Olympic Committee's umbrella and working within uh, that organization and uh, by those regulations. I'm waiting for uh, the Olympic Committee's reply uh, asking for their DEI uh, uh, policies. Uh, our society is very diverse here. Only 10% of the society is uh, national and 90% are migrants uh, for, from actually all around the world. And these modern times requires preparedness in this topic from us. So mainly right now, I'm trying to educate myself and learn as much as I can to, to help and advise my organization to, to build solid foundations. Right now we are working based on our values, but these values could be uh, translated as focusing on diversity, diversion, equity, and inclusion as well. So like whose input are you gonna need then when, when you make your draft and you want people of different backgrounds taking a look at it? Do you have those resources? Actually, 
like all the involved parties from the organization and also the players, current and, and probably future players as well. But it's, it's uh, more complex because at the moment we are running uh, a national program only because the lack of ice access. So we are very limited ice access. So this limits the participants. Uh, so mainly we need to focus on, on, on the group who are uh, matching the requirement from the Qatar Olympic Committee. So right now, this is really limited. For the future, hopefully, we can we can grow and and open up for everybody and give curling to anyone. And whenever we start to implement these DEI things, we we need to concern the future as well, not just the current situation. So actually, from the current uh, players, also from the organization and other experts who might be or will be involved in the future that's really cool too that you get to lay the groundwork for the future yeah it sounds cool buddy it's it's <laughs> a huge it's a huge responsibility I mean, yeah. it's, 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 not, it's not that simple i'm, I'm really uh, thankful to your uh, job to initiate these things and and all the resources i can gain and all the knowledge i can learn because myself wasn't educated in this as well as I told, uh, we we are working based on values, and luckily the curling values, or all the values around us, and all curling, and also the Qatar Olympic Committee values are are really great. So it's it's not that difficult, but still, it's a huge responsibility. Yes. Um, should we get started? Um. We thought then working on uh, the statements um, that we could start with sort of what what types of headlines that we want, like what are the main things, what are our main messages. Um, so we thought we would start with that and fill in the content later. And as we said earlier, it might be difficult to just write it on the spot. So. It's, it's not uh, super important now that all of the words are perfect and uh, correct, but just to give you um, a draft that you can keep working with later. Yeah, Sarah, so I don't know. For you, it might be to focus on like, ethnicity or inclusion and anti-racism in yours, if you have uh, a general statement uh, as well. Yeah, maybe it makes sense to pull up our charter as a starting point and kind of go through that a little bit and then maybe we could take a look at um, what some other countries are doing and talk about curling Sweden I know you guys are pretty close to being done and USA curling's in process and maybe look at what Scotland's doing too yes how do you want to uh, move forward with this Monica um, are you able to bring up our charter yeah, I have it here. You can't see it, no? No. Sometimes you have to change there. the screen. Yeah, here. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So um, I guess let's talk a little bit about our process in making this as a starting point. Um, we worked, this was really Raju, um, his kind of baby, I guess. He did the majority of the legwork in creating this. And I believe that he drew from, you know, a little bit of research on the internet as well. Um, but our main, you know, concepts in this are that we want to kind of provide a background about what the group is and, and where we want to go with this and what we want, want to do. Um, so the first part talks about like who we are and kind of gives a general overview for, um, our goals and um, who the members are, what they can provide and, and why we're writing this in the first place. And then um, we go into like kind of the traditional mission and vision statements. Um, vision, tends, <clears throat> vision statement tends to be more forward focused and future based. Um, so in an ideal world uh, where we would wanna be is 
in a curling world that kind of champions that all the diversity, inclusion and equity values that we're gonna identify later in the document, but kind of prevent, create this um, sense of belonging amongst all curlers um, in the world and then also within different organizations. And then our mission, oh, sorry. Yeah, our mission is kind of more about the, the how we're gonna do that. Um, we're going to inspire, we're going to educate, we're gonna guide, and we're gonna support all our stakeholders. Um, and that, that can be anybody from the national govern, governing bodies to clubs, teams, athletes, coaches, staff, volunteers, and the list goes on and on. And we tried to kind of create it an all-inclusive list, but um, obviously that this is a piece that would be different depending on your organization. And then the next part is kind of what we did in part one of this workshop. And that was to kind of go through what diversity, equity, inclusion actually means, because I think having um, solidified definitions in place is really important. Um, we use th these words a lot and there's kind of an evolving language with um, the stuff that's becoming clearer and getting better. But I think it is important to do a little bit of legwork in just thinking about what these words actually mean and what they mean to your organization. Um, this is another area that can kind of be tailored based on your organization um, in, yeah, so. And then um, here, I, I believe we looked a lot at um, what the Olympic ideals were when we were looking at this. And this is definitely tailored to each organization. So Sarah, does Curling Sweden have anything different in this place compared to what we have? Yes. Um, okay. We just changed a few things. Um, you can see, this is all, I'm sorry, this is all in Swedish. Um, yes, uh, so we changed it to our values and we have, um, like passion, teamwork, and uh, open openness. Would yeah. That be word. Uh, otherwise, our like general outline is quite quite close to this. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, and I think USA Curling could do something similar here, where we actually look at what the values of our organization are and kind of define them and and put them in this piece. And I also noticed you have your charter like straight up on your website. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So it's just published for everybody to see both internally and externally. Yeah. Yeah. Ours is on the website as well. Yeah. All our policies are on the website. Yeah. Do people look at them? Do people use them? I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it's a tick box sometimes. Yeah. Um, but you also have programs and actions that are aligned with your uh, yeah. Charter, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have an action plan, which aligns to the, the, the equality policy. Yeah. And then that kind of leads us into the um, next piece, which is the commitment piece. Um, I think it's important to kind of keep this piece broad because you want to be able to meet these goals um, and you don't want to put anything too specific that may not actually end up happening. But um, similarly to what Margaret was saying, yeah, having um, kind of the accountability piece by actually writing down commitments that you'd like to follow through on is really important. Um, so for us, some of them look like um, working with our own organizations. So in Sarah's case, working with Swedish Curling um, to kind of bring this DEI work back to the organization and um, yeah, just looking for opportunities to um, improve engagement in curling promote education and have dialogue on these issues. That's kind of our main thing. And we're doing that through, you know, webinars and panels and um, this kind of framework framework tool that we're looking to develop as well, so. Um, so maybe working on the, we're quite, um, quite a small group. Um, do we, does everyone want to take a look and put down their own headlines or do you want to make it a discussion, all the four of us or in pairs? Or what do you think would be the best? Excuse me. Do, 
<laughs> Bless you. Hi, my, my apologies. And um, within Scotland, well, within the UK, we have legal obligations, and I'm sure you do as well, because we have got uh, an Equality Act um, within within the UK, um, which actually um, pr it pr it provides protection from discrimination, and it applies throughout the whole UK, and it came into force in October 2010. And it refers to unfavorable treatment on the basis of what they call particular characteristics, which are um, age, disability, gender reassignment, marital or civil partnership status, pregnancy and maternity, race, religion, belief, sex, and sexual orientation. So these are all uh, under the, the kind of um, Equality Act protected characteristics. And so we have a a legal obligation within our organization. So part of our um, policy has a bit that says legal obligations. Now that might not be true of other other or you know other countries, but I think there might be some slight differences around different countries who, who do have it within their legal framework at some kind of equality legislation like no. we do in the UK. Do you not have something like that in Sweden, Sarah? Um, yeah, we have. I think it's quite, I don't know how to translate it properly, but like the seven, like seven factors, like, like a law that's like, it's forbidden to discriminate anyone based on these seven factors. Like yeah. if you discriminate anyone on other factors, then that's bad, but it's not yeah. illegal. Um, but it's, um, I don't think we have the maternity one that you spoke, pregnancy and maternity, but um, pretty yeah. much all of the other ones are there. Um, so those are the sort of grounds that we look to when, yeah. we, when we talk about DEI work as well. Um, yeah. It's very interesting that it's written into, like it's legal for you. It's um, kind of written into your bylaws almost, or you're accountable for that. I think I'm just looking at what the US Olympic Committee has and they don't seem to have any legal piece that I can see externally facing, but they do have, um, accountability pieces where they have a, a council that meets, they have these awards to um, reward people that are underneath the organization um, that are doing good work in this space. Like, so they have that piece, like the incentive piece, but not so much the legal accountability piece that you're talking about. I mean, th this is a huge piece, piece of UK legislation that applies right throughout Scotland, England. So it's amazing. And it's, it's not just for sport, it's for anything employment. You know, you just can't do it. Yes. you're just not allowed to do it. otherwise you you come you know you you can be prosecuted so it's it so it might be at your kind of federal level i guess in the us monica i don't know or, or maybe state level maybe maybe because you it might be each state has their own um sort of equal, e equality policy um because of your big the, the nature of your country yeah i don't know about this so i i definitely will look into it um because I, I know the US Olympic Committee is, um, I'm not sure if they're even, an, an, I don't think they're a nonprofit. Ah, oh, they might be. But I would imagine that they have something in their um, bylaws that says that they need to consider this. So I'll look into this and find out more. And then I think you're right that state legislature probably has some, a piece yeah. of that too. Yeah. So talking about that, like Margaret, it's the same for us. Like it's a law in Sweden, like the anti-discrimination yeah. law. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and then there are seven factors that are yeah. illegal to discriminate against. Um, so we sort of lean on these when we talk about DEI. And like right now we've, we've written a motion about like statutes to Swedish sports. And I think it'll also water down on other sports as well. Say that when you're choosing a board, or when you're choosing your nominations committee, then you should always strive for it, like finding people so that you have representation from yeah. all of them, from all of these seven factors that we have. Um, so that's also a way to, to sort of for, force more representation into the highest level of, of our organization. Um, one of, one of the examples for us is on the board of Scottish Curling, there was not a good gender balance. There was more men than women. And we've been working really hard to change that. And in fact, we've now almost gone the other way that there's more women than men. But, and, and also, 
Scottish Curling, the Royal Caledonian Curling Club, has never ever, and it's 184 years, I think, of, of being in existence. It's what is the oldest um, governing body in the, the. We've never had a female president. We are about to because our vice president is currently a female. So we're working on a lot of gender um, politics as well around. So that's another thing that we're doing about looking at balance and, and gender and and things like that. So that's a, that. But I mean, that's just you know, that's just part of the whole um, diversity kind of a, a, a sort of a system at the moment. Some people are better than others. We're working really hard on it because in Scotland, I think we've got a 60-40, 60 40% 60 of Scottish curling are men and 40% are women. So, you know, we have we have almost equity in numbers, but not quite in terms of, of membership of the organisation. So we're getting there. That's good work. Um, I say we are like 81% male actives, we're almost 50-50 when it comes down to kids, but then uh -huh. it goes the wrong way, the older, the older. Yeah. Are, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll get there, you will get there, but just to <laughs> if that's any reassurance to you. <laughs> so just looking at this, say Laios, uh, do you want to start? Like, are you, what kind of, what, what headlines do you think you would want to have in your charter? We were, we, the drill now is to choose three to 10 and we've listed some, some examples if you want to choose from some. Um. So definitely with the vision and the mission should start. Yes. Are you writing? You want, should I take notes? This... No, I do. I do write. <laughs> so tell us what your what your headlines will be to start with. So for the DEI chart, I really like what what you made as a group charter. Uh, but me, myself, uh, I have to coordinate first with the QOC how they approach the things before I start to do and work out something on my own. So I can't, kind of can't answer your question at the moment. That is fine. Yeah, it's tough. You really got to consult with all yeah. the stakeholders. I'm in the same boat as you. Um, I really want USA Curling to have a, a charter um, because we have a DEI committee that meets regularly and we have a lot of projects that are ongoing, but we haven't done that piece of really unifying the vision and the mission for it. Um, but I don't actually work within the organization. I'm an athlete with USA Curling. So I see from the outside what it, I would imagine the organization is about, but I don't actually know. So it's really hard for me to write something for them but I definitely am pushing them to write something. And I'm, I'm actually trying to get in touch with someone from the USOPC, the Olympic Committee to um, get some resources from them to help out as well. But I understand that it's tough, especially to do on the spot as well. Um, maybe- uh, I, I guess we've got slightly different headings from yours. Like you've got vision yeah. and ours, we've got, a, we've got a policy statement, which really is your, vision and mission it kind of come but we call it a policy statement but but really when you read it it's it's what you're labeling vision and, and mission so we talk about having a genuine equal opportunity to participate to the full extent of their own ambitions and abilities without regard to their age gender da, 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 da. and then can be assured of an environment in which their rights dignity and individual worth are respected. And in particular, they're able to enjoy their sport without the threat of intimidation, victimization, harassment, or abuse. So those are our kind of policy statements. Mm -hmm. So we talk about endorsing the principle of sports equality, ensure that everyone who wishes to be involved in curling, you know, have, that, have these kind of opportunities. And we talk about, we've got our legal obligations, which might be relevant for others but but it is for us just because of the kind of the framework we work within and then we have a thing called positive action um and then we have we have a thing called we have implementation which i'm trying to see what that was and then we have responsibilities monitoring and evaluation and we have complaints and compliance so that if we have any i guess that's take that's because you know if anybody has any issues around um, um, not being treated um, fairly, 
um, then they, they, there is an organ, there is something within our organisation that we can do about it. So we have a procedure that will take some action on that. So they're very similar, but just the words are slightly different. I yeah. guess we use slightly different headings from the words, but I think that it, it's it's um, the principles are the same, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, well, I think a lot of them are bound, like bound to have similar words and meanings. Yeah. Um, but I was yeah. wondering, so you have your general, but if you are now looking towards working more with uh, including different ethnicities, um, yeah. would you write a separate no, no, what, policy document uh, no, for that no. one? The policy document is the overall one. What we've written instead is, is an action plan about how do we implement our policy. So our action plan for 2017 to 2020, so we had goal one, which was continue to research into participation curling, monitoring engagement with protected categories and develop direct interventions. And we had objectives underneath that. Goal two was to develop and implement practices in curling to increase opportunities and access for underrepresented groups. And again, we had that broken down into specific objectives. And then we had goal three was to raise awareness and understanding of equality for all involved in curling through recruitment, training and education. And again, we've got a whole range of, of objectives. Goal four, improve the communication and marketing of equality issues and equality in curling. And goal five, which is the last one, is set accountability for equality at the highest level in the in the organisation. So those those are our action plans. So we've we've got things that we so we've mapped it out. I can share this with you so you can see what we're trying to do because what under each of these five goals we've got different objectives, we've got milestones, we've got the action we're going to take, when we hope to complete it, who's going to complete it. And, and how we monitor progress. So we've, we've got that all, I'm, I'm waving at you, you can't see it. But anyway, um, it if it's, you want to share it in the Google Drive, that would be amazing. I think if we can upload as many examples there as possible, then anyone- I'm not, I'm, I need to check with Nick, I need to check that we're happy to share this one with you. Um, but um, I, I can, I, I'm certainly happy about the quality policy because that's on our website. And um, this one is a kind of, internal document but I can check with them before I do that and then we can, yeah. we can okay but, sure. but so that's how if you like you've got an equality policy but you've got to bring it alive so our action our action plan brings the policy a lot alive and it depends on what stage of your development what your action plan is going to look like you know um so and, and this changes that we're having we usually do a three-year plan um and, and that's where we're at at the moment it's been rather affected by COVID, as you can well imagine. So, yes. it, you know, so it's it's not quite on track as we would like it to be, but it's it's certainly there. I was just thinking, um, listening to you speak, <clears throat> it might be really great um, as that something that kind of meets the goals of, of our group and the charter that we wrote is to maybe if we created kind of um, a catalog of what a lot of curling countries are doing in terms of charter statements, policies. Um, so I think but like the four of us, at least as a start, we could upload what we have for our organizations in terms of written policy or like even a, a Word document of website links yeah. um, so that we can start creating this catalog. And if we can get some other countries involved too, we'll have kind of a database of what's happening in the curling world globally um, in terms of policy writing. Uh, just because I think a lot of the problem is um, where to start and we don't need to reinvent the wheel with this. We definitely need to tailor things to our own organizations, but a lot of the work has already been done and we just want to share that, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. There is no point in everybody reinventing the wheel because you're just wasting time. If somebody's got a good document, then, and people are happy to share it, you take it and, and adjust it to fit your own personal organization situation. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. yeah. And I'm certainly happy to post these. Um, I just want to check about the action plan that Nick's happy for you to have it. And then you're very welcome to have them. Yeah, Sarah, would you be able to show the group really quick um, where on the Google Drive we're looking to kind of collect resources? And I think um, I think uh, we can start to plan maybe um, 
a policy writing part three that can put all this together and we can take what we've done today and work on it offline and kind of consult the stakeholders that we want, but at least get started in kind of collecting some of the resources that are already existing. And it sounds like um, Scottish curling has quite a few, so. Yes, we have it and like right now we are working on Google Drive. I think Rashu is starting to look at creating a website that we can have when we get the spectrum tool in order. Uh, but right now we have it under resources um, and we've div divided into to three different headlines. So it'll be under structure of a curling association or organizations, we should maybe rename it. So in here, um, in this file, we can upload, or you can just email them to us and we will upload them and share the link. Yeah, but it, I mean, it might be also worth looking at what the Canadian Association have got because they're quite yeah. uh, they're quite well advanced on a lot of this stuff, and they they'll probably got it on their website because they've got quite a good website. You could almost just lift it from their website because it's it's a public document. It, we don't need any we don't need their permission to do it because um, I, I think they have got quite a bit of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they they do. Yeah. I will also try and translate ours because we, as I said, we have the general one and then we have like a separate statement and with uh -huh. the plans that are more towards just meeting anti-racism and like inclusion based on ethnicity. Um, mm -hmm. We did this together with uh, Dr. Richard Norman um, where like we stated the background where we do see that like, we are very, very white. Um, yeah. in terms of board members and curlers, active curlers. Yeah. Oh, we have a someone entering the waiting room. Um, so we had, I can't admit her. Sorry, just having a technical uh, break here. I think they're too late at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be great to, um, I think we should do a little bit of more research into this. I'm sure Curling Canada has a lot of stuff and I, I'm sure that's why they're not here necessarily because they already have done this. So, um, yeah. Have the WCF got any stuff on, on quality on their website as well? It might be worth looking at because I would have thought they've got something around it. Are they you are already, I'll have working on it right now. Are they? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be great to see what they come up with actually because I think they're kind of, the, should be the leaders in, in this. And we should be modeling our stuff after them in a way. So, is there anything? Um, yeah, so action items moving forward. Um, for those of us who have to still put a charter together, we'll kind of work on that. And then for those of us who are more established, we can upload our stuff into the drive and share resources. Is there anything else that um, you guys would be looking for in terms of resources or anything else that you? want to see coming up or um, that you can offer the group as well? I, I could check um, and see what kind of stuff we've got on equality training, because you might want to put that into some kind of website if you've got a resor resources, because again, if you're, you know, if we've already got a whole lot of training material available on it, there's, it doesn't make sense for people to kind of develop their own training packages. And we may well have something, but I need to check that one. Um, yeah. That would be amazing because we are developing some too now together with Swedish ports, but it's all in Swedish. So uh -huh. it's not going to make a lot of sense for me to, to share it. And it'll be a lot easier for me to watch yours and then uh -huh. translate that when we do the yeah. Swedish. Let, let me let me speak to the the member of staff who does all the training stuff because I'm sure they'll have they'll have stuff on it in their their package um, that they do and and again I'm sure they would be probably be happy to share that with you um, and I'll check if we've got anything else around how do we help people understand the whole um, diversity and equality um, agenda. Yeah, I think we're definitely interested in having more training and some specifically some anti-racism training. Um, that would be really great, but a lot of this costs money. So if there's any way that curling has some shared resources globally that we can make use of, we can eliminate the cost piece potentially. So yeah, that would be really great. Yeah, I'll, I'll check. I'll check and see what we've got. 
it'd be quite good for me to learn actually because I'm I'm making assumptions but I'm sure we have uh, we do have it as part of our plan so yeah I'll check it just I'm sorry for going a bit crazy with the presentation here but apparently when I'm sharing and also have full screen I can't scroll around so that, that's why I'm <laughs> all the buttons uh, Fiona hi Oh there, sorry if I'm late. <laughs> no worries. Um, Getting are, confused with times. <laughs> there are a lot of different time zones. Do you yeah. want to just say hi and introduce yourself to the group? Hello. Uh, yeah, um, well, uh, Margaret, hello. We hi, Fiona. <laughs> kind of know each other, yes. <laughs> well, as you can hear from my accent, I, I am Scottish. Um, but I moved to Italy when I was 20 years old and uh, I worked and curled there for about 39 years. Uh, but I have now just moved, moved to Portugal where we have the huge ambition of bringing curling to Portugal. So um, there is supposed to be a rink being built, but uh, unfortunately what is happening at this precise moment has uh, kind of uh, put a spanner in the works, let's say. So uh, things are not going forward, unfortunately. Uh, but we're still very positive that uh, we're going to be able to do something. Um, we had uh, managed to have two teams, um, mixed doubles team and a mixed team who were supposed to be going to the world and the qualifying event in Turkey. But unfortunately, that didn't happen either. That was a, a, a bit of a disappointment. But um, we are keeping our fingers crossed and, and the teams are working for next year. So basically, that's what, uh, what I'm about anyway. Uh, I'm very much into curling now. Uh, I used to be a ballet teacher. I had a ballet school for over 35 years, uh, but I'm completely dedicated to curling now and to Portugal curling. And uh, I am attached to a curling coach, professional curling coach. And we, we intend on, um, uh, let's say, mm, Yes, through with, with, with his help, I am also a life coach. So I'm, I'm bringing the kind of mental game along to curling and really trying to bring uh, more meaning to it and taking curling to a different level, uh, especially with, um, you know, how we talk, how we, how we act. And, and that's why I find very appropriate that uh, I, I really kind of dived into this initiative because I just uh, feel that it's, it's marvellous. So thank you very much for taking me on board. <laughs> oh, thanks for joining. Would you um, be writing um, like a charter or a statement then for Portugal? I think we will be, yes. Uh, at this precise moment, they're, they're, they're asking us to do documents, um, but they're, they're not very clear to me. Unfortunately, my Portuguese is not very good yet. I'm learning, but not at that kind of level for, you know, an official document. Uh, but uh, I really think it will be something that we will be doing fairly soon. Yeah. So I am very interested in, in, in learning and understanding. Um, I've already looked at the, vid the, the videos that you have on YouTube. So I was, um, yes, I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised that I didn't actually, um, there were a lot of things that, that really awoke me and what was said and what was shared. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Oh, good. We just decided, said that we're going to try and make like, um, I don't, what did you say? Like a library, Monica? No, but have, have associations upload their policy documents so that we can have them in a shared file so that we can draw yeah. from each other. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to ask, Leos, um, is there anything that you're missing from this conversation or um, what what do you think so far? I don't think anything I'm missing at the moment. <laughs> I... like, do you have some? Do you think it's gonna get you some tools to start writing uh, your documents? I, I already have. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. already you already wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did write several. Oh, no, perfect. <laughs> it's work in progress. Great. Ah, we're well, here to help. Um, you can upload it too then. After permission. 
Yes. Fiona, are you part are you part of us kind of sports organization in Portugal that's moving forward with curling or is it just you and your partner who's kind of really driving this? Um, no, there is a Winter Sports Federation. We ah, are right. part of that. So oh, there, there is um, hockey. Um, I believe there's luge as well. And they're trying to get figure skating. So we're all oh. under the one at the moment. Right. Right. There's okay. talk that curling will be by itself, but we're still very much in, in, yeah. uh, in the first stages. Yeah. So, um, yes, Dan is present, but of course he's occupied elsewhere. So <laughs> once he goes back, uh, you know, I'm going to be kind of on my own. Is he, still working? is he still working in Russia? Yes, he is. Yes, yeah. yes. He uh -huh. yeah. should be going back in the beginning, uh, uh, middle of February then. Right, okay. Hopefully. Yeah. If worlds go ahead, then yeah. Well, fingers crossed. They're still hoping for, aren't they? Yep, they are. Yeah. They are. Still, yes. still hoping for it. Yeah. Yes. And Fiona, is it? Sorry, is it Steve and April that? Um, do you know them? Uh, That's them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, they emailed us. They're part of the initiative now too. Yes. Uh, yes. As a doubles team yeah that's great i know steve um from the seattle curling club actually he's he, i think he was a photographer Correct. for some curling events but yeah it's such a small curling world it's pretty funny it's, it's an <laughs> incredible world and, and i'll be very quick because it's not it shouldn't be a case of being private but i've just been talking to your twin as well monica she got in touch with me because of course her boyfriend is portuguese and somebody My got boy. us together <laughs> she actually wrote me an email this afternoon so <laughs> Oh, that's really what fun. What the small say. world it is. Yeah. <laughs> I curl in the same club as Fiona's sister. Yes. <laughs> and her family. Her family. Oh, are, gosh. This is the family are a big, Her family, her, her niece um, is part of the Scottish Elite Squad and her brother-in-law is one of the coaches in the Scottish um, curling world. So there's yes. it's a kind of fit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then yeah. my parents are Scottish too, so... Uh <laughs> yes, yes, that's what that, that that's what uh, I was being told. Yes, I, it's a small world. Yes, <laughs> we're all connected. Well, glad to meet you, and um, thanks everybody for joining and uh, participating. I know this isn't the easiest thing to talk about, especially over Zoom, but um, hopefully we'll have some more stuff coming up. And um, if there's anything that you think of that you would like to see more of, or any feedback shoot us an email and we'll just continue to add resources to our Google Drive. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah, looking forward to more conversations in the future. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Nice Thanks. to see you. Thank you. Sarah, I'll email you the stuff from Scottish Curling in the next day or two, okay? Yep, perfect. Thank you, Margaret. Okay. You're welcome. Nice to meet you all. Nice to Thank meet you. you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. <laughs>